No, we were poisoned. We were poisoned. That's the bottom line. We can sit here as Americans and our own federal government is poisoning us. Well, hello again, everyone. But U.S. President Joe Biden has pledged to change things, promising access to safe drinking water for all and to hold polluters accountable. And he says he can create jobs while doing it. That's why when people talk about climate, I think jobs. Within our climate response lies an extraordinary engine of job creation and economic opportunity ready to be fired up. Our chemistry. One such business is sustainable chemistry startup Sudoc. We've, uh, in the last six months, created uh, 10 jobs. I would imagine in the next year we're going to create 50, 100 jobs. In the next five years, I would hope we create 1,000 jobs. The company's developed a product which it says can replace and eliminate toxic chemicals in the environment. It um, has the power of a super strong chemical like chlorine or, or quaternonium, which are you know great cleaners, but it disappears, so it doesn't stay around. And we have a very strong set of evidence that we do not disrupt the systems of human beings. But we're not just going to take our evidence, we're going through third-party testing. That kind of innovation has come too late for Hope and Joanne. But their wish is that a president who says he wants to create a greener America will keep his promises and ban the chemicals which have marred so many lives. Kate Fisher, CNA, Warminster, Pennsylvania. And so let's hear on Age Now, a day of reckoning for big oil. For the first time in history, a judge has ordered a large polluter to reduce its CO2 and reduce its contribution to dangerous climate change. It's phenomenal. A court ruling in the Netherlands and boardroom battles in the US will look at how energy companies are facing more pressure to take action on climate change. Later, a cosmic phenomena that only happens once every decade, a supermoon and a total lunar eclipse. Just why it's such a rare event in just a moment when we return. This Saturday, could rising inflation derail the post-pandemic economic recovery? Those parts of the market that are more overvalued could easily get hit. Relooking China's growth model as its population ages. Chinese babies are not growing into industrial workers in the future. Plus, how to be a part of the blockchain boom. Saturday on CNA. Every day, the financial world goes through dramatic rise and falls. We'll track the biggest market movers and show you where the opportunities lie. Get the experts' take on the performance of key indices. Plus all the analysis to help you understand forces driving global economies. The daily business news you need, only on CNA. This segment is brought to you by Xeon Corporation. This is Game Welcome to I make YouTube videos. While he does bespoke carpentry, I get up close with a new generation of local craft people. Whatever it took to become a woodworker, I think I did it. Starting with a furniture artisan. If you have a CEO, the desk represents you. Will I keep all my fingers? Handmade Tales, a brand new series, Sunday on CNA. This June, Asia's past, present and future comes together. Race to feed the world as scientists, farmers and entrepreneurs solve the impending food crisis. Journalist Yul Maraki unveils the transformation of Japan's social and political identity in deciphering Japan and relive the history of the Chinese Communist Party as it marks 100 years of existence. This June on CNA. He's just looking at us with his eyes wide open. Oh, it's so cute. I'm Shushan, and in this series, I'll be tracking into hidden parts of Singapore. Oh my god, catch us! To find out what's being done to save our biodiversity. Every animal plays a significant role. And if we're running out of time. It seems that there is an uptrend in the number of road kills. It's in our nature. Video on demand on CNA.Asia. Have fun while breaking a sweat on your next visit to Gangnam. 
Enjoy the weightlessness of bungee fitness or learn the health benefits of pole dancing. So don't miss the opportunity to feel the burn with the latest workout trends in Korea. Gangnam Insider's Picks, Sunday on CNA. This program is brought to you by the Gangnam Goo Office. Welcome back. Well, global energy giants, they have suffered a big blow in recent times with climate activists and disgruntled shareholders succeeding in efforts to reduce their carbon emissions. The company boards at Exxon and Chevron caved into dissident shareholders and Royal Dutch Shell, meantime, lost a landmark case. In the United States, though, Exxon shareholders, they defied management to elect two new board members at least. They were proposed by the activist hedge fund, Engine Number no. 1, and they hold a stake in Exxon worth some $50 million. Now, that sum contrasts with Exxon's market cap today of nearly $250 billion. And over at Chevron, their shareholders voted 61% in favor of a resolution calling for the company to cut its carbon emissions. Uh, the company says they will carefully consider that result. Well, the success of climate activists extends to the courtroom as well. In the Netherlands, the Green campaigners won a court battle in The Hague to force Shell to cut their carbon emissions by 45% over the next 10 years. And the court also ruled Shell is responsible for all the emissions of its customers and its suppliers. For the first time in history, a judge has ordered a large polluter to reduce its CO2 and reduce its contribution to dangerous climate change. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. This will, this will change the whole. For the first time, I have hoped that we will manage to address climate change. I'm happy for myself, for my three kids, for all of the children in the world, for the planet. Now, as action on climate change is ramping up around the world, banks now find themselves in a position to influence financing and investment for environmental and social good. To discuss this, let's meet now Kamran Khan, APAC head of ESG with Deutsche Bank here in Singapore. Mr Khan, thank you for your time. Where are we at today in creating and delivering real value through ESG in the region? And how does this region rank or compare globally in meeting the UN Global Goals for Sustainable Development. Number 13, of course, as you well know, is climate action. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Um, look, this region has a significant role to play in the development of the global ESG market, not just for our region, but we think will have significant impact on the whole market. And to do that, I think the first key driver is that in Asia, the focus is much more on impact. So people are not just happy with general frameworks or pronouncements. And when you talk ESG in Asia, the first thing people ask you is, that's all good, but now show me the impact. Show me data, show me evidence. That's going to, that's a good thing for the market. And we believe this is going to really add a lot of value to the development of the entire ESG market. Uh, second point here is that Asia is the sourcing capital for the world. So as the global supply chains pivot towards ESG, all the Asian companies which supply to them have to think about how to align themselves with these MNCs. And we have a number of engagements right now with different clients global clients who are trying to incentivize their suppliers to fall uh, lock in step with them uh, down this ESG journey. But there are a number of things that drive uh, ESG towards Asia and a, like I said, uh, ESG models that are substantiated with data and evidence. Kamran, I'm glad you alluded to that, you know, show me the deliverables on data driven transactions, et cetera. Does Deutsche Bank do this, though, as market leader or as a major participant? And how are you going to effectively engage with the other players in this space to create standards here in the region and ensure adherence, not mere compliance to those standards? Yeah, fantastic question. Look, it all starts first with your in-house standards. So we have our own ESG taxonomy, which is global. Uh, and it also has very clear control systems so that we executed 
consistently across the world. Regardless